Hey there, welcome back. This is part 10 of my WebDriver IO tutorial series. If you'd like to check out my previous videos in this series, make sure to click on the link below in the description. In this video, we will learn the difference between find element versus find elements. So in our video so far, we have already been using find element command and that is through the dollar command here. This one. But we can also use find elements command that allows you to work through multiple elements, most commonly used for list. So let's take a look at some of the examples here. So using the dollar command, we actually calls the find element command. So this calls find element command, but we also have something called double dollar, which will actually call the find elements command. So we can use this for this example. So all we have to do is copy this, paste it here. And I'm just gonna copy this, move it here, remove this, and then change this single dollar to double dollar. And then I will comment this out. Okay, so when we will run this, it will actually trigger the find elements command. But there's one caveat here that we cannot just directly run this because that this returns an array. So we have to capture that array. So in this scenario, we only have single element that gets returned through this. So I will just add zeroth element. So this is the first index I get and return the value for that. That's basically what we're saying. So if I try to run this, uh, let me just go to my configuration, make sure it's watches. Yep. So let me run this px wdau okay so there you go our test ran and it successfully passed it took a while it took 12 seconds and that's because if you look at our watches yes we are doing um, we are refreshing after each test and then we are also going to the ebay site So I'm just gonna delete this for now as we don't need this anymore right now And then I'll go back here. Okay, so this time if you run it again, it will be much quicker Anyways, but if you notice it ran the test and it picked up the first index and then it worked fine But if I let's say change this to one this won't really work because technically there is no element um, So we are only getting the single element back. So this will fail Okay, so our test ran and as expected it failed so it was trying to expect it to display something but instead it got received not displayed and that was because we were trying to find this two elements being returned here and we were trying to fetch the second element and in our scenario there was no second element so it failed but if i just change this to zeroth element it would work fine but this is not the best scenario for us to use double dollar for obviously you would want to use something where you're getting multiple elements returned in this scenario, we just have single element. So what I'm going to do is just remove this, revert back to our original change, which is find element. Now let's take a look at example where we'll get multiple elements being returned. So let's head over to Chrome. So what we're going to do is if you notice under our shop by category, we have all this list items here, which is jewelry and watches, watches part accessory and all the other ones. So let's say if your test scenario is you need to verify the text for all this list item. Well, you can do that going one by one and then getting text. That's possible. But let's say if you don't want to do that, instead you want to get all the list items and then verify the text. So to do that, we can use find elements for it. But to before doing that, what we need to do is select our element. So we can do that by just hovering over to this. I'm going to click on this. Hover over here. Okay, so this is our section. And then we have an ID for this section. And underneath that we have this unordered list and then we have all this list items so we have this first list item which is this jewelry and watches and then we have second one is the page we are on and then all the other ones okay so let's try to find our unique element so I'm gonna if you notice section has an ID so I will do section and then ID and paste that ID I didn't copy that okay so I'm gonna select that again and then copy this ID, paste it here, close the bracket. Just notice how I'm creating a selector. So I'm doing section and without any space. I have brackets, ID, and then double quotes, and then I'm pasting the ID. So I have my unique node here. What we need to do is go to our UL. So I will do space UL and then find our list. So I will do LI. So now we have, we have all our six nodes selected, which is all the six items here. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is copy this, head over to VS Code, and then we'll create our new selector. So basically, a getter function. I will call this watches category list. And then I will return our selector. Actually, I need to wrap it up first with this. Okay, so this is how we are used to doing it so far. But in this scenario, we don't need an individual element. We need multiple elements. So we will add a dollar here. This will return an array of elements, basically a collection of elements. So now we need to get text out of all these elements. So to do that, I'm going to create a new method here. I will say get watches category list text. I'm sure, I'm sure you can name this better, but I think for now it's fine. And then here I'm going to call this getter function. So I, in order to call this, since we are within the class, I'm going to have to do this dot watch category list. And then over here, we cannot just directly do get text. This won't really work because get text, we can only do it for an individual element. Here we are returning six elements. So this is returning a collection of six elements. So in order to access that, we will have to loop through all of the six element and then do a get text on each of them. So to loop, we will use any loop function. I'm going to use map, which works in JavaScript. And then if you notice map takes a value, so I'm going to give it an element. And here, what I'm going to do is just print it out. So I'll do console log and then print the element dot get text. So I'll do this and I will just return this entire function. Okay. So basically what we are doing is we're calling our getter function and we are looping through it. And one thing I made a mistake is um, we don't have to invoke the function. All we need to do is call this function and then loop through it through each individual element and get the text out of it. So this won't really directly work. We have to call this function first so I can do that. Um, let's call it in our before function. I'm going to do watch this page dot get and then here we'll call it as a function. So before our test will run, this particular piece will run and then here what we're trying to do is console log all our element text. So let's run this and see if it works. Okay, so our test passed and if I scroll up, and uh, scroll up a bit more there's a bunch of items here okay over here so if you notice we are printing out watches mix slot watches accessories part tools and guide watches parts and accessories so basically everything that's uh, over here we are printing it out in our test here so this is working um, but if you notice we are getting all of this other item too because of the way we have our configuration set up so if i scroll down to cheats let's see where it is log level so we have different log level so we are doing for info but let's see if i just want to get um maybe warning let's let's do that so if there's any warning it will let us know but anything else it won't really give us additional information so this will really cut down all this junk information we have here. I'm going to run this quickly. Okay, so this time we don't really see all of those other items, but if you notice, we are seeing all of our text here. So that's exactly what we needed. So all this text, we have it now. What we're going to do now is pass this text over to our spec file. Let's see how we can do that. I'm going to come back to our watches page. So at this moment, we now have access to our text in order for us to return it. Since this is part of a, since this is an array, what we can do is create a new empty array here, call it watches list. Um, or what you can even name it watches category list. You know what? I'll go with this. And then instead of printing this out, we're just going to push it into this watches list. We can do that by saying watches list 
dot push and then we have element dot get text yep i think everything else looks okay then we're just going to return our watches list and instead of returning this i'm just going to remove that okay that's it so what we are doing is we created an empty array and then all the text that we were getting we are pushing that one by one to our watches list array so basically it will have a collection of all these items here and now since i'm returning this my text test here so this will return an array of all this item so this time instead of directly calling this i'm going to print this out so i'll do console.log and let's print this okay so our test passed all right so if you see the one thing is different here this time it's part of an array you see these two brackets before it was if I scroll up see this is just print this was just printing out the text but now we have a collection of all this text element so this is great because now that we have access to this array we can look through this array and verify each of this text so let's try to do that so we have added this in our before block but ideally you would want to create a new test for it so we can do that by just creating a new it block and then let's name something uh, should verify the watches list or watches category list okay and then over here i'm just gonna copy this entire thing paste it here and then get rid of this over here we can assign this to a variable um, and call this watches category list okay so all the value that will get returned which is that array will get stored in this variable now we need to create our assertion which will verify the text for each of this so how do we do that um, if you know by default we cannot use expect assertion as we don't really have any kind of assertion that will verify through all our array so this is where another one of the scenario where we will have to use chai expect or chai assertion so what we can do is go to our chai js file copy this line and then over here i'm gonna just paste this we don't need assert so i'm gonna remove this we just need our chai expect so in chai expect what i can do is add our value which is watches category list just copy this so they have i think we have looked e dot equal before so they also have something called dot too deep equal what that does is very goes through each of your array value and verifies the text to see if it's there so let's try to do that we're gonna say too deep equal and here we have to pass in our value so i'm just gonna copy this and paste it here okay so that's our session what we're saying is using our try expect anything that we're getting returned out of this which is this array verify if it equal to this so let's run this and see if this works okay so as you can see our test pass great so it should verify the watches category list this is working our entire spec file is also working awesome so just to confirm that this expect is actually working what i'll do is just delete this first line from there and try to run it again this is just so for my own sanity to make sure that this expect is actually working okay so if you noticed it failed perfect so it's saying we were expecting um six values but instead we only got five awesome so there you go so that's pretty much how you would create your assertion here for this kind of list test so let's do a quick recap so we learned the difference between find element and find elements so we can use dollar for our find element we can use double dollar for find elements and we looked at an example of how we can use find element in our test by extracting the text over here and then as a bonus we also added an assertion using chai to verify all our array values okay so in the next video we will look at how we can use timeouts in our test to wait for a specific element 
and we will also cover the difference between implicit and explicit weight as well as cover different weight commands. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and also make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more content like this. That's it for this video folks, I will see you in the next one.